Also, since our last meeting, we've had some, and that's to be a generous, developments in the presidential search. Um, after months of meetings, public forums, and candidate interviews, uh, a thorough consideration and discussion and deliberations, our committee met on July 5th and reported out three exceptionally well-qualified finalists for the board's consideration. I would also like to, again, thank the people who served on the search committee. Uh, they are community and university leaders, and they worked incredibly hard for us to define the position, guide the search, and consider 63 applicants, one of the most successful application pools in the SUS history, and vote out three finalists. Dr. Michael Hartwell, Dean of the Business uh, College at FSU, Vice Admiral Sean Buck, Superintendent of the Naval Academy, and Dr. Jose Sartinelli, former Chancellor of the UNC Wilmington campus. I am both proud of and grateful for the search committee's efforts. Following the selection of the finalists, we announced the schedule of public events with the finals that were to occur on the week of July 10th. These events would have provided our campus communities the opportunity to meet and interact with each of these finalists and provide us feedback for consideration as we made the final selection. We received lots of positive expressions of excitement for these events. Unfortunately, uh, on Friday, July 7th, just before the finals were set to begin on the following Monday, the Board of Governors Chancellor uh, Ray Rodriguez wrote me and requested that the search be suspended. The basis for this request was referred to as, quote, anomalies that were alleged to have to, uh, occurred during the search. The chancellor identified two areas of concern. The first involved a preference sur survey that the committee members utilized when determining which applicants they wanted to interview. At the time, we had nearly 60 applicants, which of the applicants they wanted, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we had nearly 60 applicants. At that time, rather than uh, taking an exorbitant amount of, of effort and time, uh, we were required to discuss all 60. Trustee Feingold made a wise proposal that the committee members individually submit a list of their top candidates to the search consultant who would then compile everyone's preferences and share that list with the committee. The expectations was that this would allow us to demonstrate some consensus who would be the most attractive candidates. And the committee would focus its time and discussions on these names rather than just all 60. The Board of Governors representative on the committee, Governor Alan Levine, enthusiastically endorsed Trustee Feingold's suggestion, saying that he had used similar methodologies in many previous searches and that it was an excellent way for the committee to efficiently consider a large candidate pool. I agreed with Trustee Feingold's and Governor Levine's suggestion and authorized our consultant to administer a survey electronically to the committee members. The committee members spent the next few weeks individually reviewing the applicants materials and submitting their preferences to the consultant. At the committee's next meeting, the consultant presented the results of the preference survey and the committee did exactly what Governor Levine had predicted it would do, quickly identified a top group of applicants to discuss. But importantly, the preference survey was just that, simply a survey. It was a tool to expedite the committee's deliberations by Aggregating initial assessments of the candidates, it was not a vote. And at, and at its next meeting, the committee thoroughly discussed highly, uh, um, part of the survey results. And then together we voted on whom we would invite for interviews. I would note uh, during that process, um, committee members actually introduced uh, more than uh, um, the candidates in the highly qualified category, which were all discussed. 
and every candidate in the highly qualified uh, category received um, um, a, a vote or a, um, a note to be considered by the, the search committee. The chancellor's letter questioned whether the use of the preference survey violated the provision of the law governing presidential searches. That is a brand new law that was just passed last year, so there are no cases to interpret it. However, we received the opinion of one of the foremost constitutional lawyers that the committee's use of the survey's preference did not violate the law. Um, if any trustees would like a copy of that survey, or, I'm sorry, that opinion letter, feel free to ask and we will share it with you. <laughs> 